restored, preserved 35 millimeter prints the way they were intended to be shown and seen by the people who made them originally. As you know, something intangible happens when you look at a 35 millimeter print projected writ large on a huge screen through the dark with a respectful audience that loves these films as all of you do. So, uh, we've all seen County Hospital before, but many of you have not seen it the way you're going to see it tonight. And um, we want to thank our projectionists up in the booth because they have a very complicated program to present because we're running films here in four different formats, DVD, DCP, 16mm, and 35mm. And they have to uh, ride the focus, the framing, and the sound, and we hope it all works. We had a run through a week ago Wednesday. We hope it goes smoothly, but we can't guarantee anything. And as Oliver said, please do turn off your cell phones. <laughs> Don't turn them on, not even once, unless you want to have our very own Richard Kramer come up there and say to you, how'd you like to meet Nick Jr.? <laughs> And we didn't have time to do this on Wednesday, but I wonder, are there any questions that anyone has about the Laurel and Hardy films or the films that we're showing here tonight or last Wednesday? In the back. In the Where back? Did the Spanish print come from? The Spanish print? Yeah. Well, it was nitrate that was in the Hal Roach Library that we preserved for <coughs> the Eastern Hemisphere copyright proprietor. And uh, we don't have exhibition prints in 35 millimeter to show, but while I was doing this work, I made up 16 millimeter prints for myself of anything that, that I really wanted, and that's what we're going to see tonight. Yes, sir, in the back. They, are they committed to continuing to restore other Roland Hardy films? Well, as I said on Wednesday, I was entrusted to spend $4 million of money provided by Munich to restore and preserve the Hal Roach Library, which work I did between 1985 and 2002. And the work product of that effort is what you see in the Universal DVD box set, as well as the Vivendi DVD box set, the Essential Laurel and Hardy, and with rare exceptions, also what you see on television at uh, Turner Classic Movies. So what we did was commercial <coughs> preservation, and it cost $4 million. And we, when we were done with our work, I was in a position, I mean, I don't want to say anything bad about uh, RHI Entertainment, but they were willing to abandon the nitrate to the point where they offered it to me personally. I, I could have owned the property rights in the Hal Roach Studios nitrate film, but I realized I was not a worthy custodian, but I knew who was a worthy custodian, and I looked to the UCLA Film and Television Archive, and my good friend Rob Stone, um, who was there at the time, he subsequently left and went back to the, went back east to the Library of Congress. Uh, but I turned over the nitrate to UCLA, and they are now embarked on a program of institutional preservation. And the way that program began, I believe, is that the gentleman I'm about to introduce next, Mr. Jeff Joseph, who made an incredible, generous donation. Should I say the amount of money that you had? A huge six-figure sum of money. I'm not kidding you. He wanted to preserve, in other words, what we did was commercial preservation. What UCLA is doing is institutional preservation. So the, that, that part of the preservation will continue at UCLA. Maybe there are one or two other questions, and then I'll introduce Jeff, and he can tell you more about not only what they're doing at UCLA, but what Jeff is doing insofar as, as a theatrical revival of Laurel and Hardy that he's working on now. So is, is there one or two more questions? Nick, since there's so many people not here from the other night, tell them about the museum exhibit. Oh, well, many of us who have treasures related to Hal Roach Studios, costumes, props, still photos, theater poster art, one-sheet posters, um, 
have loaned them to the Hollywood Museum uh, in the former Max Factor building. And a lot of you who came for the convention were treated to uh, a walkthrough of, of, of that fantastic display of artifacts on, what, was that Friday night? We did that? Thursday. Thursday. It's all a blur to me now, but it, it was a fan, it, it, it's fantastic. If you haven't seen it, and even if you have seen it, go back again, because one time through there is, is not enough to really appreciate what you see. It's just a stunning array of things that uh, just, and, and in fact, uh, in, in the program notes, for the last film you'll see tonight, which is This Is Your Life, at the end of the program, Ralph Edwards <coughs> promises to erect a, a plaque in, in lasting memory for what Laurel and Hardy have contributed as far as film comedy is concerned, <laughs> and it was going to be erected at Hal Rose Studios and be there forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was only there for another nine years because Hal Roach Jr. took over the company for his father and, and bankrupted the place. So when they tore down the studios, uh, Stan Laurel uh, was going to be the recipient of the, the plaque that was to be erected after the This Is Your Life program at Lake Laurel and Hardy. But he said, um, living at the Oceana Hotel in a, in, a, in a small apartment, he didn't have room for such a heavy object, and he thought, well, maybe I could make a coffee table out of it. Or, or where it is a St. Christopher's man. <laughs> so he refused, uh, turned down the offer, and uh, a, a lot of the, the I, I know when Len Walton and I started doing the art game, but we had to gather all these, we wanted to have uh, uh, hundreds of, of stills, and we couldn't find the stills. And I went and I talked to uh, Hal Roach and said, I know where the, the still negatives are for the Laurel and Hardy films, the Night Face still negatives, where are the art gang still negative? Where are the still floors? We can't find them any place. We're, we're, we're gathering up one or two at a time in still shops and in the collections of uh, the art gang alumni. And he said, oh, we gave all those to the Saul Lesser Museum. And, and his, his was supposed to have been uh, the same name, the, the Hollywood Museum. And all the studios around town contributed rare treasures to this thing. And it all wound up at the Lincoln Heights County Jail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where they store all these things, under the, cust uh, 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 under the custody of a, of a self-conferred PhD named Dr. Walter Doherty, who's <laughs> selling this stuff out the back door to anyone who would pay him off. <laughs> so uh, what, what wasn't sold out the back door ultimately went into city storage. And these things were crated up in uh, boxes in, in storage like you see at the end of Citizen Kane in the dark in a big warehouse. And this, this Laurel and Hardy plaque from This Is Your Life sat there from 1963 until a month ago when we found it at last, rescued it, and you'll be able to see it at the uh, Hollywood Museum. So we all... We, we encourage you all, if you, if you haven't been there, even if you've been there once, go back again, because you can't absorb it all in, in one trip through that place. So with that, I want to, I want to introduce Jeff, and he'll tell you about um, about the theatrical re-release and what they're doing. And Mr. Jeff Joseph.